the never-ending content that is Alyssa Makanti, she just don't know when to stop. This was never about anything other than hate. Comes us from Kotaku. Movements for ethics in games, journalisms, or against forced DEI in video games are diaph diaphanous, diaphanous, diaph diapenis, veils draped over bigotry. Yeah, is bigotry over and, and racism over Asian people? In my opinion. In my opinion. This, let's see what this crazy nut job has to say. On July 23rd, in response to the ongoing backlash against a black-led character in upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows, developer Ubisoft released a lengthy statement. The responses on X were exactly what you would expect. Uh, racist images, slurs, and calls for historical accuracy in the video game series that has always been steeped in science fiction. An unpublished community note, uh, Assassin's Creed N-Word Squire. <laughs> a fledgling but ferociously a loud group of gamers will tell you that Assassin's Creed Shadows backlash is about respecting Japanese culture or refusing to accept woke ideologies. To be honest, the woke ideology, we're not saying that Yasuke is not a real character. He's not a real person, right? But the respect for Japanese culture is a thing. Now, crazy nut jobs like Alyssa Mercanti would say if Japanese people have any problems with Yasuke, they are racist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, she's so oh, she's so smart. Oh my god. What a dumb bitch. But just like 2014 during the first full throat full throated in iteration of Gamergate, this was never about anything other than hate. Yeah, hate towards Asian people. The internet is a powerful place, an in-between world in which uh, imagery of rhetoric can be weaponized to such an extent it bleeds into real life. Uh, in 2014, a misogynistic movement demanding ethics in, video, uh, in games journalism broke gaming containment with such veracity that politicians took note. Steve Bannon... Isn't, isn't he in jail right now? Didn't they put Steve Bannon in jail? I'm pretty sure they did. Jeez. Former chief political st uh, strate strategist for President Donald Trump told author Joshua Green that he realized... Um... He realized could connect with these... He, he could not connect with these kids. All right, you can activate that army. They come in. They come in through Gamergate or whatever, and then he turned into into politics, onto politics and Trump. Harnessing, I, I love this one right over here. <laughs> oh, that's so good. This, I love this. I love this man. Yeah, he's serving four months sentence. Yeah, and I bet you this bitch right over here who wrote this article is like, yes, political prisoner, get his ass in jail. And then you have Merrick Garland who's like. Let's continue. Harnessing the, that power forever changed the landscape of mainstream politics. Ma many believed it directly led to both Trump securing election and capital rights. No. Um, what led to Trump's um, victory in 2016 was that nobody likes Hillary Clinton. Nobody likes Hillary Clinton. That's it. Nobody liked that bitch. Uh, part of what ensures this army remains active is cons cons consistently feeding them things they should be outraged about. For Trump and his ilk, it was a veritable laundry list of perceived problems that only he could fix. Immigrants, rapists, taxes, a, breaking, a break for billionaires, transgender people, uh, Title IX rollback, abortion, ban it, and more. Uh, so here's the thing. This bitch... Is basically sucking the dick of all these liberal cunt bags and basically, um, you know, sh sucking it so fucking hard that still still come dried on her mouth. There's literally a fucking cloudy residue all around her mouth because there's still she, she basically crawled out under uh, out from under Joe Biden's desk after he was like, huh, huh, 
Uh, am I still president? What a dumb bitch. There's always something to be up in arms about. Uh, always something to ensure you are scared, angry, concerned, and ready to do whatever it takes to get him reelected. Yeah, because as of right now, uh, everything is pretty fucked. Uh, the reactionary right-wing movement in gaming that has reared its ugly head yet again is no different. And it's happening right now for a reason. Yeah, because Anita Sarkeesian, their love and savior, is officially gone. Right? Another thing is that uh, Horrible Harris is now basically uh, running for office. And she basically uh, going to be president. Right, she wants to be president. She ain't, uh, she she ain't black in the sense of being black. And the thing is that she is Jamaican Indian, so she's not your traditional black person who grew up with black values, right? So now, uh, this person that obviously had Trump derangement syndrome, she's fucking nuts, and she's an insane, insane person who probably sniffs her own fart whenever she fart. She she fucking Dutch oven. She goes, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's basically her every day. Every day. All right, let's see. Um, social, uh, socio cultural issues are reaching a fever pitch in an election year. And just like 10 years ago, political ire is bleeding into popular culture, whereas been seized upon by looking to take advantage of naive, impressionable young men who are shunned in public and lauded online. There are countless studies and stories proving that the radicalization of male youth has been propped up and perpetuated by the internet. Go read them as they'll convince you far more effectively than I can. But what I can say, especially having faced this ire ceaselessly for months, is that this kind of movement is fueled by nothing but hate. So you're saying that a lot, you're talking about the, the thousands and thousands of Japanese people who are talking about Let's just talk about Assassin's Creed because that's relevant. Are you talking about all the Japanese people who are extremely upset with cultural appropriation by Yasuke? Right? Appropriating a role of a samurai. Right? Are you saying that all of them are hateful? Right? Can Mer can Alyssa Mercanti answer that? I don't think she can. She she's in a position of privilege, and the thing is that Kotaku is still alive and well. But let's see for how long, right? It's a special brand of hatred, a sort of backworks logic boomerang careening through the air on its way back from progress. Uh, since its inception, gaming as cultural space was largely dominated by white boys and men. You have to have a certain amount of wealth and free time to even partake in it, and those were not readily available to marginalize the groups in the 90s, uh, sorry, 80s and 90s. Now, was gaming culture predominantly a men's thing? Yeah, I'm not saying women can't play it, but it is um, a boys and men's thing, right? But saying white, you don't have to add this in, man. You don't have to add this shit. This is fucking framing that all white boys and men are bad. Shut the fuck up, pussy. Uh, marketing and designs of games aimed at boys increasingly feel the widespread perception that this hobby is exclusively for them, to the point where many girls with an interest in it were met with parental resistance and cultural shunning. Because it is. It is a boy's hobby. Has it changed to becoming a girl's hobby? Absolutely. But here's the thing. There was a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a month ago now, Capcom released a uh, survey that was basically everyone, anyone or anyone who could have participated in it. 85% of Cap, and this is just Capcom, of Capcom game players, people who played games that are Capcom related, 85% were men. And this was done, the study was done a month ago. So you're saying that it's it is considered ratio based off the ratio and the percentage wise, it is considered a boys' hobby, right? I'm not saying girls can't participate in boys' hobbies, right? It's because we welcome that shit, especially if those girls are hot. Now, if those girls are hot and they're good at video games, 
It's a win-win, baby. It's a win-win. Eventually, a substantial number of women, queer folks, and minorities got jobs in the video game industry as developers, social media managers, community organizers, journalists, and more. The rise of indie games opened up the floor for more unique approaches to, v uh, to game development, more diverse schools of thought, more genre-bending titles that defy definition, largely thanks to the Me Too and the Black Lives Matter movements, bad actors were held accountable for per perpetuating antiquated ideologies and anti or sorry or antisocial behaviors against marginalized folks in gaming. And that's where you started implementing DEI and ESG garbage, right? And that's why all of a sudden Microsoft is getting rid of it. They're getting rid of all this. DEI costs them a lot of money, man. Maybe like several million dollars a year just to have a DEI department and it's bad, right? How about you just make good games, huh? Mer Alyssa Mercanti has, I don't think she's, she, she's just a writer. She just, she has never been in, she has never been in the, as a developer. I, I've been working in the game industry as a developer and an artist for more than 10 years. I know way more than her. And she thinks that she knows what she's doing because she has a platform to write garbage like this. Man, the fight uh, to now even get somewhat level playing field, but it felt like it was um, had nearly got had, we had nearly gotten there. Here's the thing. I think overall we could just write good stuff, make good video games. I, I, I think I think I think that's all we need. We do. and could this game could this Assassin's Creed game be really really good? Yeah, absolutely. But I think Yasuke not being represented correctly. I think that is the least of the game's problems. Ubisoft has been really shitty as of late. They've been really, really bad. I want to check out Ubisoft's stock. Uh, let's see. Five days. The oh god damn! Man! Man! Wow! 22 to 19. Man! Ain't that something? Ain't... Ain't that something, man? Yeah, money talks. Look, I don't care what Alyssa Mercanti has to really say because all she's... She's basically talking out of her asshole. Uh, or her bonus hole. I'm not sure what, what she identify as. Maybe an it or something like that. I, I'm gonna stop reading it. But thing is, Assassin's Creed Shadows is not gonna sell well. Star Wars Outlaws is not going to sell well. Concord Beta is doing really, really bad. All right, money, money speaks, money talks. If your game sucks. I wonder how the board members and the investors feel about Ubisoft right now, right? The fact that they, they're they down three points in the past five days. And this is a straight, this is a straight fall off right here, man. I don't, I, I don't care what it is. I'm pretty sure the investors are pissed off right now. And that's the reason why I guarantee that uh, what's it called again? They had to make an apology. They had to make an apology is because they're, it's really, really bad. Man. And um, Alyssa Mercanti, you think you're, you think you're the, you're, you're doing well. You're, it's what you, what you are pushing will be the, eventually be the downfall, right? It's sort of like, am I the one who's out of, out of touch? No, it's the fans. It's the people in Japan. They're the one who's wrong, not me. I'm not wrong. The yellow people in Japan are wrong. Fuck them. Alyssa Mercante does not give a shit. She does not give a flying fuck to what people says. She lives in she lives in the, her own bubble, and all she can think about is, I wonder how much money I'm making off of my OnlyFans. And the thing is, I saw her boobs before. Woof. Holy sh- Do you know how a deflated balloon looks like? That's her tits. Man, they're fucking ugly. Holy shit, man. Unbangable.